Hello everybody, my name is Amul Patel, you're watching the Smoking Hot Coffee Show, where we talk to startup founders, and uh, I'm from Los Angeles, I'm joined hey guys, by I'm Jeff Pelton down here in San Diego. And today we have an amazing interview with uh, founder, CEO, Matthew Bellows from Yesware. Uh, dot com. Uh, so Jeff, uh, give us a little brief overview. What does Yesware do? Uh, so Yesware is great. It's a plugin or software that lives within your Gmail. Uh, so you add Yesware to your Gmail, but it's email for salespeople. So it's targeted at the fact that salespeople spend a lot of their time every day in email. And so the main features right. that they offer here are tracking of emails, templates of emails, and CRM integration so that you aren't wasting okay. your time duplicating. So templates are things like when you find yourself copying and pasting the same message to people over and over again, uh, you can do that. Right. It tracks like kind of the which templates work the best. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you're prospecting, if you're trying to uh, deal with objections, mm -hmm. if you're trying to close the deal, yep, that kind of exactly. thing? Uh, it'll show you which ones get opened the most or replied to the most. Uh, and, and which I thought was a wonderful yep. feature. And and what else we got? We got uh, tracking. Yeah, so tracking is the other huge one, right? A lot of people may not even know this is possible, but you can track when your emails get opened. Uh, and I think it relies upon them yeah. opening the images or downloading the images in there. But it works pretty well. We've been using it for smoking hot for a while, and so that's a huge yeah, feature yeah. for people to get feedback about when you've sent an email if the recipient has opened it. Uh, that lets you know, oh, they've yeah. read it, but they haven't replied to me yet. Things like that. It, it, it is it is such a game changer. Every time I send out emails, I have no idea if anybody's actually mm -hmm. even read them. Uh, and then now we're actually getting uh, so and so opened it up in San Francisco on oh, his yeah. iPhone or on exactly. his Windows machine or whatever. Yeah, and so then that kind of it's helps incredible. you track overall your efficiency and and sort of process. And then the last new uh, newest feature I think they've added is not uh, notifications or reminders. Uh, so you know right. if yeah. if they don't reply to me, uh, if I'm sending out an email and the recipient does not reply to me within a certain amount of time, I want a, a reminder that I should probably go touch base with them and see what happened. Things like right. that are really really no. useful. Right in your out of your inbox. So so yes, where is a shining example of the very thriving scene in Boston uh, for a startup scope? Um, and um, you know Matthew was kind enough to share his history, uh, how he got into this whole internet game back in the late 1990s. Um, how he got his first job. He, this guy's been it's around been the true. block several mm -hmm. times. He's had a couple of really successful exits. Uh, and so uh, he knows what he's doing, and and so for those of us that are starting out or are thinking about an idea or a product, there's a lot of wonderful information you can glean from this interview. Uh, one of the one of the key takeaways that I got from this was, um, you know, him and his partner had built a sort of uh, mock-up, a prototype, or whatever, and they got 45 people. Uh, they were trying to raise money from that said no to them before they found uh, their first angel, uh, first rather uh, seed round of a million dollars. Uh, Forty-five no's, Jeff. That's a, a lot of no's. A lot of people to tell you uh, that the, you know this isn't for me uh, before they got there. Yeah. So persistence yeah. and, is a huge thing, right? Oh, it's huge. And and uh, and now we can see that Yesware is doing very well. Um, they're growing. Uh, they've they signed up uh, another really hot company called AdRoll. They're big fans of them. Um, and Adroll, uh, you know, is doing really well using Yesware as their sort of main or one of their tools in their tool belt for business development and, you know, building their own startup, Adroll, that specifically. Yeah. And so, um, uh, you know, Yesware has been successful in, in a key air, a key uh, drivers of most startups, and that's the freemium mm -hmm. model, which uh, a lot of startups, you know, can't make it on freemium. I'm not suggesting that you do, but in uh, so, some startups, it, it makes perfect sense. Yes, where's one of them? They've got a th they got a free, forever free model here, 100 tracking events a month. And let me tell you guys, once you once you download this and you start using it in your Gmail, uh, you'll wanna you'll wanna pay because it, it is great. It is. I mean, I I remember when I tried it out, I was a freemium user of course and I was like Jeff we mm -hmm. have to get this yeah <laughs> do yeah. you remember that Jeff do you remember when I yeah, said yeah absolutely you know when we talk about that in the conversation you know when he went out to customers and said we were uh, they were offering these bigger packages for enterprise they were more than willing to pay because of the value it provides yeah. uh, I think it's great though yeah. that they're going after the freemium model that allows people to get in uh, free of charge lets yeah. them try it because I think this is something people don't even realize is possible to be honest with you and so yeah. uh, at least the yeah, tracking yeah. and the reminders some of those things are really nice uh, you know maybe a hundred tracking events is all I need every month uh, honestly, I haven't used this right. for me personally yet, but I probably yeah. will add this to my personal Gmail account now. And uh, you don't yeah. have to track yeah. every email that you send out, I don't think. So, you know, just those right. ones that you uh, you know, really want to know when they've read them. 
uh, might be useful. Right, right, and and so email is such a general communications you know, bottom, you know, bottom sort of low level communications platform for the internet. Uh, not just salespeople, customer service, uh, business development, you know, all sorts of. Uh, people could use uh, this service. I, I have to tell you, uh, Jeff. After talking to him and, and getting uh, more, learning more about the product, I think these guys have got a big hit on their hands. Mm -hmm. And uh, those 45 people that didn't invest in them, they made a big yeah, mistake. Yeah, well, they really uh, did. You know, and I think actually, though, he said when he pitched it to them, they were a, a standalone mail app or mail client, um, and they pivoted yeah. afterwards to this uh, Gmail. Uh, which, which is a huge ecosystem. Yeah. So, you know, that's really great conversation. We love to study that as startup entrepreneurs on the web. Yeah. There are so many different places you yeah. can be and, you know, different, uh, you know, what matters, I think, what yes, where um, Matthew tells us is, is it was their long-term strategy, whether it was a standalone yeah. app or whether it was a plug-in, the, the team and the idea, uh, you know, the concept, what matters. And, uh, it's really great to hear how they uh, made it through all that uh, journey. So far. Yeah, yeah, and so you're gonna get a you're gonna get a good dose of that. He uh, he was nice enough to walk us through the product uh, and share how, how to yeah. use it. Um, if you're a, if you're a Gmail user, you owe it to yourself to to check yes we're out and to check out this mm -hmm. interview. If you are in any any way uh, uh, you know trying to get customers to use your product or, or trying to build a you know partnerships or whatever you're using Gmail, this is a great great uh, interview for that. Um, you know. Uh, before we close, I want to you know tell everybody to please subscribe to the show uh, on iTunes and on YouTube. Uh, we need those subscribers. We really care uh, uh, that uh, we watch those subscriber numbers like a hawk. I know I do. I know yeah. Jeff does. And so please uh, subscribe to us uh, both places and um, tell your friends and colleagues about our show because I think um, you know uh, there's a lot of information that we're yeah, gaining. If you guys and... found anything interesting in this episode, please do pass it along to your friends, colleagues, uh, you know the other guys out. There that are trying to make it on their own, uh, you know, I think we'll really find yeah. something useful in here, uh, like our other episodes. Uh, and with that, I also want to mention briefly before we get into the uh, interview <clears throat> that we're redesigning our homepage and we're really starting to embrace yeah. the fact that we've been doing these every afternoon around 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So we're going to keep doing them and we've got our calendar booked like for four or five weeks out. So we're going to put that up on our website. Yeah. Uh, we've already started adding that. You can go take a sneak peek, but by the end of this week, uh, we should have the full schedule loaded. And we really want to make it more interactive with you guys, with the audience, and with our guests. So uh, when you're watching, you come to the website, smokinghotcoffee.com, uh, every day live for the show. And there's a chat room there where you'll be able to yeah. engage with both us, the guests, and yourself so you can discuss what you think yeah. of the conversation and that'll really help us uh, figure out where you want to take this uh, because it's about you guys yeah. not yeah. just us mm -hmm. yep so 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time we're, we're gonna be doing this Monday through Friday live so if you need to get your startup hustle on that's what we're gonna be doing we're gonna be talking about the startup mm -hmm. hustle we're gonna be talking about how to break through how to take your uh, company how to take your product and get it out to the millions of people that you think should be using it we're gonna talk about how to get away from that dead-end job and maybe you want to try to build something on this off the side we, you know we're always uh, fighting for the little Absolutely. Guys. So, so you know um, go ahead and take a look at that schedule that we put up and see if any of those guys are in an industry similar to yours, you know, similar to the ideas that you have and your passions and, you know, send us any questions that yep. you might have for them uh, and we'll make sure to ask them on the show. And, and you know, we're always going to be talking about how to make your app or web or whatever it is viral, how to take, you know, how to get more people using your product. You know, those are the key focus, um, at least more of my focus on that. We're going to talk about product. Uh, we'll talk about funding. All of these things are going to be talked about uh, 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, Monday through Friday. So if those uh, topics are remotely interesting to you, then please uh, tune in and check us out. And you can always email us at info at Smoking Hot Coffee. Yep. Jeff, unless you have nope. anything to add, let's That's cut it. to the Thanks. show. Today we've got Matthew from Yesware. Uh, Matthew's been in the industry for many years. Uh, and he, last time we had him on, we had some connection issues. But uh, earlier, last time you were telling us about your history. So let's go ahead. Let's start it from the beginning. Uh, tell us about about your, you know, uh, your beginnings in the in the internet uh, space, and um, you know, from school and all that, and meeting the VC, and and give give us uh, give us your background and how you ended up here. Yeah, sure. I, in a nutshell, I've been in uh, sales and startups since 1995 uh, at my own company, and also at other people's companies. Um, yes, where is the second company that? My friend Cashman, Andrus, and I co-founded um, 
we there, our first company we sold to CNET after three years of uh, bootstrapping. Do you mind if it, uh, what was your exit? How much you guys make out of that deal? Uh, <laughs> we, we made we made a good bit of money for a short amount of work. Uh, okay, okay, okay. So can we say uh, a ten million dollar exit? A million dollar to more? No, no, no. no oh, no. come on, Matthew. This is the enough, juice. This is what we live enough, for here. Enough to buy a new car, a new house, or to bootstrap your next startup. All, right, All three. Cool. All three. There okay. You go. All right. Well, <laughs> sounds sounds pretty good. Sounds pretty good. Yeah, good. Well, look, I mean, it, it's interesting because when you um, w when you bootstrap a company, um, you own it, you know, and you own the whole thing. Mm -hmm. I, I always say the best way to finance a company is with your customers paying you more than it costs you to make the product. Right. So I'm, I'm a big fan of, um, you know, using customer financing to, to scale a company. It's slower, for sure, than gotcha. raising venture money. Right, right, but, right. Um, but you own it all. No, this whole yeah. customer financing thing is a is a very big deal. Um, uh, there's a guy out in San Diego called uh, his name is uh, Maxwell, um, and he does this whole thing called foundation, where he's trying to pre-sell the SaaS to potential customers to get them to fund the development. I thought it was okay. a brilliant idea. So, well, it's 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 the way it's been done. It's as old school as you know human society and capitalism is. So there's nothing new about it at all. It's it's basically uh, the right way to do things, okay. but all right. So go back to CNET. So you had a good exit there. Yeah, so we had a good exit um, after our first startup. We we had worked in other people's startups before, so we knew each other really well. And and then that process of kind of bootstrapping and selling uh, the company was, you know, really formative in terms of you know we've been through the startup ringer together, and um, and so when. Uh, you know, when we were kicking around other ideas, there was kind of only one guy that I would have really wanted to work with to build it out, um, and that's Cashman. So uh, we started Yesware in September of 2010. Okay. Actually, before you go into Yesware, I want to tell our audience again, you had a really great story when you were just getting out of college, how you used to go to these uh, financing uh, VC pitch meetings in order to get you. To give us a little bit of that. Uh, that was really great. Well, I... I um, so it, it has to do with sort of, are you ready to start your own company or work for another startup? And, and what's the best way to get going in the startup world? I, I firmly believe that um, unless you're really inspired and, and really know what you want to do, that after college, in my case grad school, um, you should work for another startup for a little while until you really figure out what you're good at and what you want to do and what you don't want to do. Right. Um, and so that's after business school. There, but I graduated from business school in, in May of 1999, the beginning of the first internet bubble. And so people were like starting companies left and right, and and I just felt like that was I wasn't ready for it. Right. And so I went to work at a startup. I wanted to learn about what it's like to work in a startup. And the way I found my startup was I went to investor meetings, like you know they had these pitch sessions, and so. Okay. Right. I went and I applied to be an usher or a ticket taker or whatever it is right. to get in free. And I hear all these CEOs pitching their company to a room full of investors. Right. And I would listen and I would take notes on the ones I liked. And so the one that I liked the best was this guy named Bill Jacobson who started this company called Interstep. And that was an email uh, services company, like a SaaS model. Right. We called it ASP then. Right. And I went up to him afterwards and I was like, dude, great presentation. That was fantastic. I really liked what you said. And he was like, hey, thanks a lot. Right. Are you going to give me money? And I said, no, but you should hire me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, and it was just a great way of getting to know people and seeing what was out there. So. Right, right. right. Yeah. Did, did you indeed end up uh, working for, for him? I did, yeah. Oh, I, I, I did a consulting project with him before I graduated from business school. Okay. And then I went to work. That was my job out of business school. I was a VP of sales and marketing for his company, and we wrote a business plan and wow. ended up selling that company to Flycast uh, three months after I joined. Wow. Oh, nice. Three months. Wow. <laughs> and then, I think, and then Flycast turned around and sold itself to CMGI up back here in Massachusetts. Right. Uh, two months later. That that was such an extraordinary time. It, internet mm -hmm. was like there was so much money flowing everywhere. It was great. It was it was it was great from some points of view. It was not real business. Right. You know. Right. And so the next three years. I was at CMGI and basically okay. watched 
uh, us hit like wall after wall after wall after wall is we couldn't figure out how to build a business model. When I say we, I mean we loosely. I was like director of business development for one of their many divisions. So gotcha. I had no say in what was actually going on. Okay. Um, and I just watched you know round after round of layoff happen. And, wow. Um, okay. Very painful. Right, right. It sounds like, yeah, I know uh, after 2000, 2001, 2002, it's a very dark time for consumer internet, and internet in general in the States. Um, so. It was actually a fantastic time to start a business. I, I believe that uh, starting businesses in recessions is actually a great way to do it because you have lots of people who have nothing to do. And so, <laughs> you know, they're looking for something exciting right. to work on. Right? Yeah, that, that's a good point. There's nothing to do. There's no opportunity cost. <laughs> right. They could be the cafe or they could help you build your thing. And so right, right. everyone's looking for us, you know, something to put on their resume. So right. yeah. we were able to build a very good team in the midst of a very dark sort of period of time. And then when, as things started to come out in 2003, 2004, right. we had a company up and running. That's great. That's great. So tell us about the, what, what, com what was that company and when, what did you guys form? <laughs> so that company was called WGR Media. Okay. Uh, it was a media company based in Boston. We were fundamentally predicated on the idea that people would play video games on their cell phones. Okay. Crazy. <laughs> so this was 2001 okay. um, when we started it, and the first fe first sort of data-enabled cell phones were just coming out. Okay. Is and this is this before WAP or? This is WAP. Oh, this, this is, is WAP. Okay. WAP is the first. Yeah, WAP is the first indication that we're going to have like network-enabled mm -hmm. computers right. on your phone. Right. You know? and, and and our thesis was basically, hey, these are mobile computers. Right. And what do people like to do with computers? Well, they like to play games on computers. So mm -hmm. therefore, there will be this segment of the industry. And so I, you know, I would. I started out writing the reviews. I wrote reviews of Bantumi and Gladiator okay. and Alien Fish Exchange and all these like proto mobile games and then <laughs> wow, I got yeah. the site up and running and yeah. I called Cashman and I was like I, I can't do anything more with this thing. <laughs> like, right. I, I know HTML that's about it you know right. and so he was like all right I'll make you a real website you know and I started selling me ads and so I learned a lot about what didn't work with online advertising and so oh, okay uh, just really briefly here so these are games and you were approaching possible advertisers to put in game ads and uh, or no, 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 no. We're a website, so we just we had reviews on these oh, games okay. on the mm -hmm. cell phone. I on got the you. Services. I, I got you. So it was basically it's a media uh, publishing for uh, WAP games back back in the early days. I got yeah. you. So for people that are looking to purchase the games or consume the games, we we'll go to you guys to find them. And we find figured the best that the of. only the only group of people that were stronger than the carriers in the mobile games 1.0 mobile entertainment world was the 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 rabid user. Got gotcha. you. You know, so if we can aggregate enough rabid users together, right. then carriers would start to listen to us. And frankly, they did. I mean, it was really cool because they started offering downloadable content in Java and Brew. Okay. You know, that oh, means well, anything yeah. to anybody anymore. But yeah. like it used to mean something to people. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah uh, and 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 so they started reading our reviews about what games to buy and okay. what mm -hmm. to buy, and suddenly like the carriers started paying attention and. That's great. So uh, obviously, you you settled in uh, the biz dev sales role, which is your strong suit. Uh, how did how did that company do? Well, uh, uh, that was the company we built up and sold the CNET. So. Oh, gotcha. That was the one you sold the CNET. Wow, that's right. great. Well, how many? So did you end up going to CNET and staying over there? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I worked for a year for CNET. Um, we moved the whole team out to San Francisco. We reported into the GameSpot group. Okay. Um, okay. And so we became the mobile section of GameSpot. Cool. And um, the rest of my team moved out to San Francisco, including Cashman. I stayed in Boston and had twins. And okay. <laughs> I mean, I didn't have twins. My wife right, had right, twins. Right, right, right. Okay, I all right. Of, though, yeah. So, all right, so that, you, you did that afterwards for about a year, you're saying, and then you decided to start something new? Then I, I wanted to get more into the development of games and figure out how they were actually made. So I became the general manager of a game developer called Floodgate, wow. which was a world-class uh, game development team here in Boston. Okay. And helped them raise money and helped them uh, sign development deals with 
Nokia and Disney and Microsoft and a bunch of other ones. Okay, they're doing console games, or this is strictly mobile. It was almost all mobile. We did a couple casual PC games as well, but mostly okay. mobile games. Gotcha. Um, and we ended up selling that to Zynga about uh, about two years ago now, two and a half years ago. Wow, Zynga, that's a Dang. huge exit. Those guys are. Well, uh, uh, is how is Flood doing? I mean, are they basically merged in uh, whatever game properties, programmers, all that? Is that part of now Zynga and branded Zynga? Yes, that's right. They all went into Zynga, and then you know, Zynga's obviously been having some layoffs recently. So mm-hmm. some of the guys are still there, some are not. So what's your interesting? Th- this is this whole area of social gaming, casual gaming. What's your feeling with where things are going? Uh, what, do you think there's still going to be? Uh, room for consoles? Do you think it's all going to be basically mobile and casual, or what's your feeling? I, I'm sure there's room for consoles. I mean, I, I, I'm sure there's there are people who always want more immersive experiences, and it's just going to be a much broader segment of the population that thinks of themselves as gamers. I mean, that's already happening, right? So, mm-hmm. thanks to you know Facebook, uh, you know people who never thought of themselves as gamers now. Are trying new games. I mean, I always, I always took the point of view that like everyone's a gamer. Okay. Whether you like to play poker with your buddies on Thursday nights, or you like to play, you know, the crossword puzzle or Scrabble or whatever it is, like yeah. playing games is a human thing. No, yeah. there's no one. There are very few people who don't like to play some kind of game. Right. Mm-hmm. Whether it's a video game and whether it's Counter Strike and whether it's you know like those are all gradations of the same spectrum. So. I feel like consoles have a place in that in that entertainment, you know, sort of um, you know spectrum. But yeah. it's 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 the the whole market is much much wider than just the console world. Gotcha, mm-hmm. gotcha. Okay. Yeah, it's true. I mean, we've seen so many new people jumping on gaming with Farmville and such that uh, the casual gaming market, I think, has grown beyond the hardcore gamers that we traditionally see gaming as. It's great. Absolutely. It's just a bigger market. It's a mass market entertainment medium, and it has been for ten years. What's your mm-hmm. feeling uh, with the recent layoffs at Zanga? What do you think's going on over there? You think, you think they're going to pull it together? I, I don't know, honestly, and I, I really I wish them the best. Uh, it, it's extremely difficult um, to figure out how to scale a business as fast as they did, and then continue on the ramp that they had laid out for Wall Street. So, I, right. Mm-hmm. I really hope they do. I, I, there's a ton of smart, talented people there. I know they work wicked hard. So, right. Um, do but I don't. I don't have any inside information or really uh, know really how, how they can turn it around and stuff. What do you, What do you think about their strategy based on their size? Like, do you think there's some advantages to being as big as they are, and do you think there's disadvantages to being as big as they are, where the smaller guys have more uh, of an advantage, perhaps? Great question. In the old days. Scale was everything in the games industry because you had very limited distribution channel, and so you mm-hmm. wanted to be big to shove everything that you built down. So yeah, you can you can have my popular franchise, but you got to take three of the less popular or new titles. <laughs> right, sure. And that was the way that game publishers would queue up, you know, future uh, franchises for themselves. Right now, mm-hmm. there's there's none of that. There is no, you go direct to consumer via mobile, direct to consumer via you know social networks, gotcha. and even the consoles have you know digital download kind of inter- mm-hmm. you know channels. So what's, scale is as important as a publisher now. What's your since we're talking about marketing and distribution? What's your feeling in terms of like uh, getting ranked in the top of the iOS store, iTunes, um, you know, in their in their marketplace? So it's really it's, just, it's a huge battle getting in that top twenty five or top thirty or whatever it is. Um, do you have what's your feeling insights on that? Do you have anything to share? I I, I don't. I, I I know it's good. <laughs> we don't have a, we don't have an iOS product yet, so right, right. I haven't had to fight those battles yet. Um, well, every, everyone I talk to says you should get in there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any yeah. Well, you know, it's just another another way of people discovering stuff now um, on iTunes, as you know. Um, so, and Android, of course, is another one. Um, all right, so let's uh, let's go ahead and let's segue into Yesware. So, tell us about Yesware and how you found yourself there, and why email. I mean, you've done games uh, for a little bit. I know, uh, um, you know, wh- why? Yeah, why email? Why Gmail? Why why build on Gmail's uh, platform? You know, because of course Google uh, could really love what you're doing and start incorporating those features within Gmail. Are you worried about that and all those kind of questions? 
Um, why email? So Yesware, in a nutshell, is email for salespeople. We customize email, make it work better for salespeople. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, as we've said, I, I've been in sales my whole life, and so I felt the pain that salespeople feel when they're using generic tools to do very high value add activities. Mm -hmm. um, and basically, you know, one third of sales activities is an email. Right. They, they email people. We we phone, you know, voice, you know, phone call with people, and we have meetings with people, like right. in person or virtually, like this. And so, um, it seems ridiculous that salespeople who are, you know, there's 120 million, you know, real active B2B professional salespeople in the world, and um, and they use a generic set of tools to do a very high value activity. Right. Mm -hmm. So the basic thesis was, hey, if we make this work better for them, they'll be more successful. They'll make more money. If salespeople make more money, they they actually take home more money. Right. And so they'll give us some of it. Right. Sure. That's the business plan. Okay. And, um, and so obviously, your sales force is a big uh, player in that field. What, did you feel like you know people are spending more of their time in Gmail? It's not integrated well with Salesforce. That that was your opening. Uh, well, that is true, and and that is what we've built into. But we started out saying, how can we make email work better for salespeople? And because while there are you know hooks between Gmail and Salesforce and Outlook and Salesforce and Outlook and other CRMs, um, the fundamental workflow of email did not work very well for salespeople and wasn't customized for salespeople. So that's where we started. It was like, here's something that people spend an inordinate amount of time doing every single day. Right. How do we make that better for them? And so we added in three main features at the start. Um, we added in a template library, so it's very easy to create mm -hmm. new emails based on what, what's worked in the past. Right. We added in a CRM sync feature so you can write all your stuff to your CRM. And we added in a tracking feature, so you can see who opens your mail, when they, uh, where they are, what platform they're reading on, etc. Mm -hmm. um, and those three features are sort of the core of yes, where we've added a lot more to that since then. But, but it was very important to us to not recreate an email client, but instead make the one that people already use work better. Gotcha. So that that's why we're not trying to build a new you know Gmail. We're instead trying to modify Gmail to make it work better. Gotcha, gotcha. Mm -hmm. So basically, the most essential functions um, that maybe a Salesforce would incorporate, but have them right within the Gmail interface as opposed to leaving it. Yeah, I mean Salesforce is I think Salesforce is really more of a database for okay. uh, you know enterprise information, customer information, collaboration between salespeople and managers and and their team. Gotcha. Um, gotcha. It's not the place where people do most of their work. Some people send emails from Salesforce, but the vast majority of emails are sent from their client. Gotcha. Um, I see what you're saying. So, uh, so that's not really a competitor. That's a whole other. No, gotcha. they're they're actually a great partner for us, and and mm -hmm. we uh, we work with a ton of Salesforce customers okay. to improve the quality of the data that's actually in the Salesforce. Database. I see. So the I reports see. become more actionable. The information okay. becomes more real because the flip side of Yesware is that. As salespeople use it, we are extracting the knowledge out of what they're doing, and we're writing that into Salesforce for them. Okay. So it saves salespeople a ton of time. It also improves the data that's in the database. Which is perfect. I, I have yeah. to tell you, um, I love this uh, software. We we actually are using it as part of our what we do. Uh, that's great. And it's it's awesome when when I send out a please come on our show, and and then you know we'll say oh such and such has opened it. And it'll tell you what device he opened it, where exactly he's where the device was yeah, at. Yeah, the location. It's yeah. very nice. It, it's it's yeah. really great. Can I, can I ask real quick? Is it uh, Gmail only for the time being? Uh, yes, we're the name uh, available in Gmail and in Outlook 2013, the oh, okay. the recently released version of Outlook. Okay. Um, and and the version in Outlook is not the full product. There's a bunch of features that are there, but most of the features that we have are not in that in that version of Outlook. Gotcha. It's, it's a really tricky thing, and you asked why Outlook. Um, it was an entry strategy, and we really, really wanted to be careful that we built enterprise quality software from the beginning. Okay. And in order to do that with a very small team, we needed to focus on our one particular platform 
right. and just try to get that right. Yeah. And um, and we chose the right one. We chose one that was growing quickly that had a lot of business users that right. had a lot of early adopters. No, yeah. I, I, um, I think this is great. Can you talk to us more about picking pl the Gmail as the platform? Like, how did that look as a business proposal? Is like the size of like how many Gmail users are there, and you know how can you defend? You know, I think it's a platform that not enough people are thinking is is an option. Um. Sure. So there are about 500 million people that use Gmail as their email okay. thing, which doesn't mean much for business users like us, but uh, it's a lot of people. There are about mm -hmm. 5 million businesses that are hosted on Google Apps. Oh, okay. okay yeah. So 5 million domains. Right. That, that is inflated, I think, because there are a lot of people that have test accounts and, and several you know small business mm -hmm. accounts and things sure. like that. Right. Um, but there are hundreds of thousands of businesses, like sizable businesses, right. that run Google Apps. Right. Yeah. Um, so that's our initial sort of target market, and that's that's the people that we're selling to right now. Um, it, it all it all became clear to me when I talked with uh, uh, this guy Jeremy Allaire, who's the CEO of yeah. of uh, Allaire and founder of Allaire, and yep. then Macromedia, and then mm -hmm. started Breakcove. Yeah, the yeah. That guy is that guy's been around the block. Yeah. And he, he basically laid out the case. He was basically like, forget Exchange for now. Just focus on Google Apps. Okay. It's rapidly growing and, mm -hmm. um, and very easy to develop for. It has a great distribution channel. And just focus on one thing and do it well. Gotcha. Thanks. Yeah, I have yeah, I to think say, you guys made the right choice. Yeah, I have to say it's a great product. Yeah, I use Gmail all the time. It's wonderful. It's, it's awesome, actually. It's really, really great. Mm -hmm. well, there's, no, there's, no, there's very small number of startups and... I would say they're probably all dumb that don't use Gmail to start up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, why would you, why would you go through the effort of hosted exchange and blah blah blah? Like, right. come on, totally. just use this thing. It's so good and so cheap. Yeah. 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 No, I just love those advantages. It's kind of why we're on a hangout right now. You know, yeah. Google gives yeah. away everything for free, and it's so great and pretty stable and cutting edge. So, like you're saying, I'm sure developing this equal product on Exchange would take 10 times longer than building it for Gmail, you know, against Google, which is a little bit uh, more bleeding edge on the, the curve of uh, the web. So well, there's, it's a there's smarter move technologically. The, there's the development um, sort of challenges and there's the distribution challenges. If mm. you, as you're thinking about building a business, you know, if you, you have to consider both equally and, and right. to make a great engineered product that doesn't have a distribution channel is like it's really right. makes it extra hard for you absolutely you're shooting yourself yeah. in the foot for sure it um, just makes it harder and yeah you know, yeah so it's all about minimizing difficulty what, what uh, so let, let's get into uh, the promotional distribution uh, obviously uh, you, you're on the Gmail platform which is massive what have you what have you found um, Really has worked for Yesware in terms of getting the word out. In terms, is, is it other is it other salespeople referring uh, their friends that are sales uh, folks, or are you just uh, is there a lot of outbound? Uh, what yeah. have you found worked really well? We are. Uh, it, it's almost cliche to say now in the sort of lean startup you know environment, but we are totally product focused. Um, we. Totally copied the Dropbox, you know, refer a friend to get more usage model. Okay. It really, really works for us. Yep. We up until, um, you know, up until early this year, we spent no money on marketing and put it all back into the product. Wow. We got, you know, we, we, we spent something like a total of ten thousand dollars on marketing over the course of the first eighteen months or two years of the business, and had one hundred and fifty thousand users. So. Wow. You know, it's really like just make a product that works well and make, gives users immediate joy and helps them do their job better and helps mm -hmm. them be more successful. Right. And then just and just encourage them, hey, you know, if you want to keep using this for free, tell your friends. Right. Yeah. And, and that word of mouth sort of fraud has been very effective for us. And then and then what we say is like every time you reach a certain usage point, we say, hey, bring us more users. You know, tell tell your friends or right. pay us five bucks a month. Brilliant. And so salespeople who are professionals are like, they get sick of asking their friends and then they just start paying us five bucks a month. Right. Yeah. Wow, that's, that's great. I love it. So this referral model has really worked for you. This is really oh, yeah. good. Yeah, absolutely. Well, have you done yeah. anything to spur more referrals? Obviously, you're, you're throttling. So as soon as well, we hit a yeah. thing, you get an automated messaging and it turns off. Or How does that work? Or? Yeah, exactly. We, 
the, the tracking feature is sort of the, the easiest feature to get into and the most immediate sort of, uh, you know. Wow outlook. factor for sure. Yeah, yeah. And so, um, no, trust so me, man. When you see those little growl notices show up on the left or right, you're like, wow, this is so cool. Mm -hmm. It gives you feedback about what's happening in the world in a way that regular yeah. email doesn't. And yeah. Yeah. that kind of feedback is so helpful. Yeah. It, it makes you feel good. It also like gives you information about how, like, I know I should call this person right now. Right. I know I can reach them on their mobile phone. Right. I know mm -hmm. they're thinking about me right now. Right. Let me follow up. Right. You yeah. know. So, so it gives you actionable data as well as like a, a good sense of you know accomplishment or feedback. Uh, you know, I last uh, I think last week I reached out to this fellow who's running a crowdsourcing platform, and I sent him an email, and I know he opened it because Yesware yeah. showed me that he did open it in Oakland, and uh, I waited for a couple of days and I didn't get a response from him. So I sent him another little video that I was inspired by about crowdsourcing with a, hey, I know you, uh, you may or may not have got my email, uh, <laughs> but uh, would love to have you on. And I'm still waiting to hear back from him. But uh, yeah, it's really great. I, lo I love that feature. So yeah, so, so that was the one that we put the meter on. And um, okay. and we've tweaked it a lot in terms of like wanting to make sure you know casual users uh, you know can use it for free for a long time. And actually, if you're sort of in the median, if you're about fifty percentile in terms of usage, yeah. you just use it for free month to month. And at the end of every month, we give you a hundred more events. Okay. So mm -hmm. there are plenty of people that just keep using it for free, right. um, and that's fine because we really we only want to charge people who are using it. Um, a lot, you know, for their work, right? Because yeah. it's really a professional tool. So, gotcha. Gotcha. Um, so those are the people that we say, "Hey, we're for your friends." Or you know, yeah, I, I think I, the word of mouth really works. You know, just making a product that people love and it wows them from day zero, they're more likely to just tell that, you know, share that with ten other friends. This is actually a, something that I took from the video game industry and my experience in the games industry, which is that. Right. Um, you want a product that you're building to give people joy in 15 seconds or less. Mm -hmm. okay. And the, the design aspect of everything from a video game, like an arcade machine, to a free-to-play demo on the web, to, uh, you know, I mean, Farmville is incredible at doing this. Right. I, I'm a big fan of the Supercell games right now. Uh, I play Clash of Clans on my phone and my iPad. Okay. But they are incredibly good at, like, giving joy quickly and then like having this wonderful easy progression ramp up right. and so we're not nearly as good as those guys because they focus on it all the time and they're experts at it but like right. that that's the that's the thinking in product design is to say like yeah. within 15 seconds of doing something we should right. give people joy gotcha I, I have to tell you um, Jeff and I we talk about freemium models all the time we talk about viral loops how to get multiple people interacting, how to insert yourself within the communication process to help your, uh, help your product um, be exposed to more people. Um, it's great that you, you guys are making money off of freemium. Uh, I've, there's so many SaaS uh, providers, startups that are littered, uh, that are no longer around because they thought freemium was going to save them, and, the, and it didn't. And you guys have made it, which is really great. Well, thank you. I mean, um, I don't feel like we've made it. I feel like we've made it this far. Okay. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, uh, you're right. How, okay, but, uh, so tell uh, us how how long have you yeah, been? Yeah. So doing, where long, do we go from there? Yeah. So how how long has the company been around? Uh, how big is the company? Uh, are you profitable? No. We, so we started in in uh, September 2010. Okay. We're about two and a half years. Um, we've raised two rounds of venture financing. So compared to our first business, you know, which was Bootstrap, this is venture finance. Okay. So almost by definition, we're not profitable. Okay. Um, and and we're basically, you know, investing the revenues and a portion of our investor money into growing the company uh, faster than we would otherwise. You know. Well, so, mm -hmm. are, so are, would you say two rounds? These are two angel angel rounds. Um, no. Uh, we have some angels on the. So we did we did a million dollar seed round in okay. April of 2011. Right. Um, Google Ventures and Foundry were sort of the two lead oh, VCs. Oh wow! There. You guys got Google Ventures. Right. Oh, that's fantastic. Did, was that a, was that your strategy? Let me do Gmail and let me go reach out to their venture arm. Is, was that what you're thinking? Um, kind of. Yeah. 
<laughs> okay. No, it's I mean, smart. It was, hey, well, I mean. Well, Rich Miner is the partner, and, and he and I have known each other for a while just in from the Boston scene. Okay. Um, and so I, I just sort of took this idea to him before we even were talking about venture money because I wanted to see if he thought it was a good idea. He's right. a really smart guy. He's great with product. He's great with technology. And so I was just like, right. Right. I think I'm working on this. Cashman's in. We're going to probably build this thing out. Do you think it's a good idea or not? Right. And so he was very early on, you know, sort of giving us the sort of thumbs up, thumbs down, right. you know, kind of stuff. And right. so um, it, and it was very important for me to get them involved because we're built on Gmail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. did, so oh, really briefly, when you approached him, did you have mock-ups? Was this just a little paper napkin thing? How, how did you pitch him? When, we, when, we, when I first approached him, it was sort of, right around the time we were getting started. And I, I, it was just a concept. We basically had coffee for half an hour outside okay. of Kendall Square office. And, right, right. and I just said, email for salespeople, make it work better, right. help them make more money, okay. blah. You know? And he was like, oh, that sounds pretty interesting. Yeah, sounds, OK, all right. So uh, you, you like, cool, thanks, man. Thanks a ton. That was right. great. <laughs> and so then I came back to him with, we did, we did mock-ups. OK. Um, I, we hired a real UI designer to do beautiful mock-ups of what it would look like. Right. And mm -hmm. then um, I showed those to him, and he was like, "Wow, well, that looks pretty good. That, okay. that could be interesting." Okay. And then you know, Cashman cut them up into little pieces and started building a workable prototype based on those mock-ups. And then we we were making progress on building this thing up, and we were boot, we were paying for development out of our own pockets. Right. 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 And so, um, you know, at some point we got it, we got it 80% working. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, when I say we, I mean Cashman and his team got it 80% working, and I was like, you know, doing every, all the sales and marketing stuff, right. fundraising stuff. But right. We ended up closing the round. We got term sheets in February of 2011. Those now you know I, I obviously you know him pretty well, but a lot of people say, "Oh, this sounds interesting," and then when it comes down to writing a check, they're like, "Eh, you know, I think we're gonna pass." Uh, how was yeah. it the working prototype? What, what was it that really? Okay, I can see this happening. I don't know. <laughs> Do you know what I mean, Matthew? I mean, everybody says, "Oh, great idea." I I talked I talked to forty five different people. For our seed round, I talked to angels, micro VCs, macro VCs, everyone in between. I talked to angel groups, individual angels, all the stuff. Okay. And, and like, forty-three of them passed. You oh, know what wow. I mean? Okay. So for a measly million-dollar round, and Cashman and I built the business and sold it for. I was like, I, I was like, what are you people doing? Wow. We're gonna get this done. I don't know exactly how we're gonna get it done. I'm not gonna lie to you about. Knowing that I'd know how we're getting it done, but we're going to get it done. Right. Mm -hmm. but, but you know, investors have all kinds of reasons, exogenous and and, and internal, and things that they can share with you and things they can't. Right. Mm -hmm. But why yeah. they pass? I think it's really important that people don't get discouraged, although it's really discouraging. Mm -hmm. uh, right. You know, don't take it personally. Like wow. take the feedback, but but don't give up until you give up. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah. Just because someone doesn't like your idea, it doesn't. There's a bunch of people in Boston who are building bootstrap companies because VCs won't finance them, right. because they don't think the market's big enough, or they don't think the entrepreneurs, you know, whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. They're going to build these businesses. We did it before. It's it's totally doable to build a great business for yourself. Right. You don't need VC funding to do it. Right. Um, it's just a choice that you. It's an option that you can or you can take. We needed mm -hmm. to do it. We felt like we needed to take VC money because we wanted to grow this thing. Quickly, and it's a big, big, huge opportunity, and and it would take a lot of work to get it right. Gotcha. Like a lot of engineers to get it right, and right. so we weren't going to finance that ourselves. Right. But that does not mean that you need venture financing to build a successful business. Well, I, there's. I, go ahead. I have to say, forty-five guys turn you down. You've you've obviously got a pretty <laughs> decent track record, you and your uh, partner, and they still turn you down. Uh, su I'm, yeah. I'm surprised. <laughs> what were the common things? There were a lot of people like, "Why would you pick Gmail? That's not big enough." Yeah, what about that was a big one. Is that the big one? A lot of business people you're, aren't you're not on. A lot of them are exchanged. Yeah, and... yeah. Uh, Outlook is such a big part of the market. Ninety-five yeah. percent of the market. If you're on Gmail. Why are you doing this? Blah blah blah. Right. Cool. And I had an answer, obviously, but you know, uh -huh. you can only 
I, I honestly don't believe you can answer, you can really convince people to do something they don't fundamentally believe in. Right, like you can mm -hmm, tell yeah. them what you're doing and they yeah. can, if they, if they resonate with it, then they're going to start discounting down. It, gotcha. But again, like investors, especially professional investors, have to pass on 999 deals out of 1,000. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just because of the number of deals they see and because so, the few deals they can actually do. So, so, so let, let me ask you something here. So, so, uh, you know, uh, we we get this a lot from lots of and lots of you know bootstrap entrepreneurs. You know, everybody's everybody wants the lead investor. Everybody wants the first guy to to write that two hundred thousand dollar check or whatever it is. And then you know, then you got the six that everybody jumps in. It's, it's always hard to get that very first uh, person to write the check. Oh, what would you uh, like? How did you do this, man? How did you pull this off? Out of 45 no's, how did you get that million dollar secret? How did you have the persistence to keep going to that last one? Well, uh, be honest. No, I'm just thinking, I mean, I mean, it, 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 it's such an obvious idea. It's not that hard to figure out. Right. It's just... Yeah. And I, I lived the problem for my whole career. Right, mm -hmm. right, right. You know, and it's it's basically not it's not that you just look at any CRM today and use it. Anyone who's used it knows that this is not the final state of the industry, right? That, <laughs> that yeah. CRMs are amazing at what they do, right. but they 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 suffer from a, a very basic garbage in garbage out problem. Mm -hmm. You have highly paid, smart, motivated people typing crap into the CRM, like with their hands. Right. And that is not a good way to collect data mm -hmm. that you run your business on. Right. Yeah. And right. so, yeah. How can it be that we that it's a twenty billion dollar industry, and and yet still it's predicated on expensive, smart, hardworking salespeople typing stuff in? Right, it makes right. no sense at all. Yeah. So, yeah. while it's discouraging to uh, you know, not immediately get support and kudos and backslaps for coming up with this great idea. Right. <laughs> There's a combination of like, um, of of clarity of vision that you need to have that says this is a great opportunity. Right. Mm -hmm. And an ability to sort of understand where people are coming from because clarity of vision and idea is like worth nothing. It doesn't matter. Like. It, Ideas are so cheap. It's really all execution. And so all those people that turned us down, I don't think they all thought it was a stupid idea. I think they probably thought it was generally a decent idea, right. but they didn't think we could execute on it. Right. And, and, and so they naturally passed. And mm -hmm. you know, I wish them no ill will. I think they made the best decision they could at the time. And, and right. I think they were, in their minds, they were absolutely right at the time. Okay. I think it was just, mm. We're going to execute. Like we're going to figure it out. I, and so, when you say execute, you mean if you would have showed them animated mocks, some sort of uh, actual prototype, initial several. No, we, we built a we built an eighty percent functional prototype. Okay. Hmm. So, so it worked. I mean, so they were just want, they they just were not believing that uh, salespeople would enough salespeople would support it and use the product. That was their big objection. Well, to be fair, um, and and to be completely honest. The, the prototype that we built was a standalone new web-based email client. Oh, okay. okay. And we were saying it's got all these cool features in it. We're going to get people to switch. Like, mm -hmm. they're gonna, like they plug in their IMAP settings on their mobile phone to set it up. They're going to plug right. in their IMAP oh, settings. Oh, I got you. Okay, okay. okay. That's, a big, that's a big thing, right? Yeah, that's a big mm -hmm. thing. And, 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 and basically they were like... Uh, yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> good luck with that, buddy. See you later. I got to go. <laughs> so the, the difference, though, between our investors and the other people that passed okay. was that they saw uh, the prototype not as an example of the product that we would bring to market, but as an example of a, of a team that could, had a vision and could build something yeah. to address that vision. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. gotcha. And so, so that's what separates incredible seeds seed stage investors from the rest. Right. They're, right. they're not coming in saying like, we're going to help you bring this prototype to market. They're coming in saying, we love where you're going. Right. We think you can do it. We don't know what it is, right. but yeah. we're going to help you figure it out for a year. This Great. is, uh, okay, so Matthew, yeah. so, I was, sorry, go ahead, Jeff. 
Well, I'm just saying, so it's not about the, the product that you have in hand at the moment, in fact. It's more about the team that you've built and the knowledge well, base that you've uh, 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 built against the problem. Yeah. Your, your, your mileage may vary. And i got to say, I mean, if it wasn't for Brad Feld and Rich Miner, like, this would be a totally different story because mm -hmm. everyone else that we talked to was all about bring this thing to market, bring version one to market. So, so yeah, I'm a huge product guy. But. Right. Well, yeah, I have to, I have to ask you, Matt, uh, Matthew. You forgot. You this is an important piece here. This huge idea, instead of creating your own client, let's bolt it onto a client that everybody's already using. That's a huge pivot. Uh, when did that happen? Who came up with this idea? Um, that that happened after the first board meeting. Okay. So we, we, we closed this round in April of 2011. Right. We went down to New York to have our first board meeting in the Google offices in New York. It was amazing. We were blown away. Cool. We finally found our way through the computer museum and the, like, you know, <laughs> cafe one, two, three, and four into our <laughs> conference room. We sit down. I've got, like, 150 slides about our product future, roadmap, blah, 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 right. all the stuff. And, and I basically think this is going to be a victory lap. I, I, I go in there thinking, like, it's done. Like these guys are busy. They don't want to spend time with us. Right. It's probably forty-five minutes. They'll go through the deck, and then they say, "Go get them, Tiger." You know. Right. Instead, mm -hmm. it was three hours of like point by point questions about each part of the application and what we had done and what we were thinking, where we wanted to take it, and what was coming next, and mm -hmm. why did we do this versus that. And at the end of it, um, I can't remember if it was Brad or Rich, but one of those guys said. Would it kill you to not write any code for thirty days? Huh. And I was like, what? <laughs> "Stop what development." Are you, what are you talking about? Right. And they were like, "Are there incredible competitive pressures that are going to destroy your opportunity to build a great product if you don't write any code for thirty days?" And we're like, "No." And they said, "Well, why don't you just take thirty days and?" It talk to some more people. Introduce, we'll introduce you to some more people. Think about the technology again. Think about the time to market. Think about how you want to build this product. Right. And don't let the momentum that got you to this point drive you over a cliff. And don't waste the money we just gave you bringing something to market that you don't think 100% has the best chance to succeed. Okay. And Brad summarized it. He said, slow down to speed up. Huh. And I was like, Oh, it was really, it was, my first thought was sort of like, wow, what an amazing opportunity, what an incredible chance that we have to like stop. Right, take a breather, yeah. Take a breather and yeah. think and sort of not worry about selling all the time. Mm -hmm. And my second thought was, holy crap, now what do we do? <laughs> right, yeah. right. Like, we blew up our whole thing. Right, yeah. And so we took the train back and, you know, we just basically started sketching from zero again. Wait, hold on, uh -huh. so... so did Brad, did, did he look at this and think, you know what, this whole building a whole new client isn't the way? What, did he, is he the one to pitch the Gmail thing? No, no, we, well, he, he, um, he and Rich both didn't believe that we could build a big company if we were a standalone email client. Okay. But to their credit, and I will always, uh, I will never forget this, they did not impose that on us. Wow. <laughs> They said, That's great. think about it. They yeah. carved out the time that we could do it. And That's said, so awesome. You know, fresh start, think about it, and whatever you want to do, we're, we're behind you 100%. You know, but, I have to tell you, man, uh, people say it all the time, smart money is the way to go. And uh, you guys got some smart guys there. Yeah. 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 And, and smart money is not determined by the, um, uh, the firm that people work for. Or the uh, last exit that the partner had, or any of those things. Oh. Smart money is determined by the level of MIPS that the partner is going to devote to to your project. Oh, that's a good way of looking at it. I like that. Do you mean the amount of like focus that guy is willing to spend with you? Like how 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 much time and energy are they going to think about you with, and 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 how much. Um, Thoughtfulness are they going to put up to every every one of your conversations? And mm -hmm. I, I would take a guy who uh, comes from a third tier firm but loves what we do and wants to help us make it better, right. uh, as opposed to a first tier partner who's already bought his yacht and whatever. Mm -hmm. You know right. what I mean? Right. right. Yeah. 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 Wow. It's all about execution, and yeah. there are plenty of people out there. And by the way, this goes for angels as well. Yeah. There are plenty of angels out there that can add a ton of value 
um, because they really care about the people they invest in. I have to tell you, Matthew, I had no idea you guys are trying to build a separate email client. I completely agree with those guys. I don't think you would have made it. <laughs> I'll be honest. I mean, maybe you could have. Maybe. Who knows? But, uh, God, that is such an uphill climb. You know? Yeah. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, I was going to ask about it. The landscape of it, you know, apps are so hot right now. A lot of people are saying email is just ripe for disruption. Although you're right, you yeah, email is ripe. Yeah. Proving that, but yeah. uh, I think some other people are taking shots at it. I think there was another big acquisition, right? Uh, Mailbox app, like uh, Dropbox acquired someone. Yeah. Uh, so I, I know they're, you know, the, it, what email has been like the same for how twenty yeah. years. Yeah, I mean, that's it's right. been yeah. it's yeah. been the same as it's been since before the internet, pro you know, basically oh, yeah. the World right. Wide Web at least. Yeah. Um, right. So. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, how do you look at that? Is a, uh, uh, you know, is the email going to remain this this constant platform that we can keep bolting on new applications to that we kind of have it for a long time, right? Like attachments have been the only real like extension of yeah. email. We've had That's a really a good lot. point. I mean, will we or have maybe forms? Maybe like calendar invites or something. You know, adding forms to email. Adding, I know YouTube now. Gmail adds YouTube's within the email. That that's one thing that they're mm -hmm. doing. Uh, form yeah. input would be interesting. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I, I think email as a communication channel is going to be with us for at least another 25 years. But just like the phone is still with us, now phones have changed quite a bit since, you know, 1859 or whatever, but, um, right, right. but email will be with us for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. it, but the, you know, the form factor and the way we interact with it as a medium will change as well. But the basic idea of like asynchronous written communication to one or more people Mm -hmm. um, and the and the fundamental reply reply all forward, like that's that's not going anywhere. Right. And and people, I love people who say like email's dead, right. and how social networks and tweet Twitter and SMS and stuff are gonna you know take over email. I'm like no no no. Yeah. If you if you talk to a salesperson, any salesperson will use any channel at all to get in front and get a contact with somebody. They'll use whatever it takes. They'll use mailing stone tablets if they need to. <laughs> right. But when it, when it comes to actually doing business, yeah, it's all email. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, no, there's no question. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I have to so, say, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry, sorry, Jeff. Well, just another evolution on the technology, real quick. Get this out of the way. But um, you're working with Google, and you know, you're on Gmail. Is there going to be a point where they adopt some of the feature sets you have, like uh, email tracking? Um, you know, and because you're partnered with them, you know, maybe they offer, hey, Yesware can offer this feature for you for you know a few dollars a month. But are, are they going to at ever any point like sort of put that in front of users as a, a thing that could you could use? I mean, they they might at any time. Uh, okay, I, I really doubt it because we're really focused on a very to them a very small niche. Of okay. high value users, right? They the things that Gmail needs to think about is how do we support the next billion users, mm -hmm. and the features right. that we make need to work for all billion of them. I see. Yeah. And what we do is we just focus on the next you know ten or fifty or hundred million salespeople. Okay. And so you know it's a rounding error to them, and and mm -hmm. the opportunity cost that they have for building in sales specific features into the overall Gmail is enormous. Oh, I got you. And so. They, they really, you know, Gmail's not technically a platform. They don't really support it like a platform. There's no external available API, no developer program, none of that stuff. This is, in a sense, hacked in. Okay. So, you know, it's not even really that kind of thing. Salesforce is obviously has a huge developer community and a great third-party app developer uh -huh. uh, you know, support system. And so in that way, we look like a more traditional partner to them than we do to Google. Gotcha. Um, what is your feeling about other people uh, using Gmail as a platform? A company comes to mind as Reportive. Uh, yeah. What do you think of those guys? Uh, what, are you do you talk with them? Is there a mutually beneficial relationship there? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. There, and there's a ton of them. I mean, it, it's really fun to go to the if you have used the Chrome browser, go to the browser app store right. oh, okay. and uh, and just look at the thousands of. Apps. There's a ton of games there actually. It's yeah, a yeah. huge game development channel. Yeah. Um, and I would suggest any game developers that are listening, forget the iOS platform and go to Chrome. I mean, you see cool. many games with hundreds of thousands of users in a, in a browser uh, window. Um, and there's there's everything built right in, and um, and you get a great experience. Right. So, um, 
That's a great question, but yeah. Yeah, I was just wondering if you're going to start incorporating some of the features that I saw reported, you know, where you kind of hover over a person's mm -hmm. email and it pulls you know, in their we, social information. I thought that part was really cool. Yeah, we actually had a feature like that at one point, and we pulled it out because um, for two reasons. Well, mostly because Reported does it so much better. Okay. And that's really their whole, I mean, they're owned by LinkedIn now, so, you know, they, they, they're focusing on other things. But um, we, we can't be all things to all people. Gotcha. That's and cool. The stuff we do, we really want to make world class. So That's great. Um, I love it. We, I love the fact that you guys are just going to keep focusing on, on the salesperson's. Uh, and, we, we test these little features and we think to ourselves, can we, can we do that better? So, for example, we just rolled out a feature called Reminders, okay. where you can, as, before you send an email, you can uh, set a reminder for yourself if okay. the person reply, doesn't reply or okay. no matter what. And You know, uh, before, you, before you get into that, uh, is there any way that you can screen share and show us that? I'd love for you to just yeah. walk us through a little bit of this. Yeah, it's sure. over there on your uh, left is a green... Yeah. Button there, screen share, and you can select specific windows. Can you see my yep. email now? I see yep. it. Yep. All right. So, um, so Yesware is a browser extension, and it customizes the way Gmail works for you. Okay. Um, okay. One area where you see it happen is right down here at the bottom of the new Compose window. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a template library in here. Okay. These are organized by sales activity. So all my prospecting templates are in here. My pipeline management templates are in here. Gotcha. My personal templates are in here. Do you want to do you want to share any of your personal templates with us? Yeah, sure. So so here's my personal template um, uh, uh, library. Okay. And um, you know, for example, I just directions. Oh, there the we office. go. Directions. Oh, yeah. yeah. So this is one use. There there are many others. Mm -hmm. um, but the cool thing is we measure reply rate by template. Awesome. So you see this 100% uh, next to it? Uh -huh. Right. That's the, re that's the reply rate. That means every time in the last seven days that I've sent that email, I've gotten a reply. Oh, that's great. And we use this as a measure of what templates are working and what okay. templates are not. Okay. So you as a salesperson can look down your reply, your, your template library, and see which ones are getting people to write you back. That right. is so great. You get feedback right there in the yeah. template. Yeah. Now, the second button is this CRM button. When this is checked, it's being saved to your CRM, whether that's Salesforce or other CRMs. Okay. Salesforce is the most integrated one, but we have support for any CRM that uses the BCC feature. Okay. okay. This track button means, when this is checked, it means track this email, i.e., mm -hmm. tell me if someone opened it, wrap the link, so tell me if someone clicks on the links. Thanks. And then this is the feature I was just talking about, remind me. So if I yeah. send you a message, I can set when I want it to be, like send me a message tomorrow or on the 25th, etc. Right. Mm -hmm. At the time, and if I don't receive a reply or no matter what, set a reminder for me. I see. Nice. Very cool. Um, this is a this is actually a very standard feature. It was first time I've heard about it was from a company called FollowUp.cc, which a guy named Chris Keller started in Boston. Okay. And it was. Um, it's a really cool feature, and a lot of other companies have, have, have built their versions of it since then. Right. Um, and we waited until we could actually add our take on this and to make it work better for salespeople. Okay. And so our, our take on it basically is that you can, um, when you get your reminder back, i.e. when this thing clicks, right. your reminder will include all kinds of open and, and uh, location information. Oh. So say this email was opened on such such a date, this time, at this location by this oh, person. Oh, that is beautiful. So you have some feedback in the reminder that gives you more insight into what's actually going on. Right. That's great. Right. Oh, this is really great. Yeah. Um, you know, is can we see your pricing grid? I just want to, or actually, go ahead if you want to show us more. Well, just the only other thing I wanted to say is so, so, um, so this is what happens when you get your email tracked. You see. Mm -hmm when people opened a message, what message they opened. You can click on it, you can see where they opened it and from right. where. Right. You can you can chart your events on a map yeah. so you can see you know, where they're happening. So if you're traveling, yeah. you can look and see how your open events right. correlate uh, to your team average. This part was really cool, I have to tell you. When I was looking at the map feature, Jeff, uh, just looking mm -hmm. at all the different people that we're connecting with on oh, the map, yeah. I thought that was really great. 
motivating, right? Yeah, it's totally motivating. Yeah. And then this is just a separate view, which basically oh. people use like a checkbox. So yeah. I can see all the emails I've sent in order. Right. I can see which ones were opened and clicked and replied to. Okay. So I can okay. say, let, show me all the ones that were opened but not replied to. Right. Nice. So I want to follow up with those people because I know they read their message. In fact, I can even set a reminder right here if I want That's to nice. remind myself to follow up tomorrow, for example. Right, right. Yep. That's great. All these things are basically aimed at helping a salesperson do their job better. Right. But like I said, the flip of the coin is that while salespeople use it, they, their data is, we aggregate their data so the rest of the team can see how the team is doing. Mm -hmm. So here's an example of our sales team here, and I can see Paul... And I can I can click in and see details about his oh, email that is traffic. Oh, so great! And, mm -hmm. and and all of this is available now without them doing any data entry at all. Right. Yeah. So it's quite a powerful way. And then all this data is also being written to Salesforce. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to come to Yesware to see the data. You can also see it in Salesforce. Wow, that's beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah, I have this to is, say, this is it's, really a, great. it's a great product. Uh, yeah, a yeah. great product. Awesome product. So uh, let me ask, like, as a layman, real quick, are are there uh, other use cases than salespeople looking at using this sort of software? Like, maybe even just a customer ser service or just a startup in general oh, for yeah. all of their tasks. That's a good point. Oh, well, we lost Matthew. So yeah, hit the what, hang up button. Why don't uh, do you want to let me so put this on pause? Right okay, and we're recording. Okay, sorry I'm about asking. that. We lost you. No problem. Um. Yeah, you were asking if there are other people besides sales people using it. Yeah, I mean, I can imagine a startup using it, and then they're using it for marketing functions, sales functions, yeah. and other things. You know, are, are people using it for customer support? You know, to do follow-ups and keep track of uh, all those relationships, or yeah. maybe even business development. You know, all that kind of stuff. Yep, exactly. I mean, we we say email for salespeople so that we can be very specific about the people we want to make sure you know love the product. But mm -hmm. there are lots of people that do sales-like activities. Yeah. yeah. Um, and customer communication act activities, and right. so mm -hmm. there are lots of people using Esware for a wide variety of professional, you know, like uh, PR people, a lot mm -hmm. of lawyers. Right. There's a nonprofit dance company in Brooklyn that uses it to promote their events. There's, you know, there's a lot of. That's great. Yeah. So, is your pro uh, the promotions and marketing? Are you basically focusing on the product and the word of mouth growth that we talked about earlier? Because, like you're saying, I have a, an example use case. My uncle has a construction firm. That uh, you know, he's probably doing a lot of the email and business development and outreach. You know, s s uh, lining up projects and doing all that sort of uh, back and forth himself. He, I'm sure he has no idea about advanced tools like these that are sort of uh, you know for salespeople. Uh, you know, are you doing anything to break into small little niches like that that might not know that there's great tools like email tracking uh, that would help them? Yeah. Um. I mean, the thing that we're doing is, is trying to make a great product and encourage our users to tell their friends and family about it. Mm -hmm. right. So, um, otherwise, it's, it's prohibitively expensive to yeah, reach out yeah. to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, yeah, you're a he's absolutely right. Um, you know, every dollar counts. Um, you know, every every day counts for you guys. Uh, so clearly, referrals is working really well for you. Uh, have you thought about uh, doing any sort of content marketing? Writing a lot of, you know, working on your blogs, that kind of thing. Yeah, we, we do a ton of, um, of writing, and I think it carries over from our previous business. Okay. Um, you know, content is it's just great. I think about it from one way, just, uh, you know, not every salesperson's on Gmail. And so if we can help them do their job better, help them close more deals okay. through the blog, then that's a benefit to them. And okay. so we, we spend a lot of time writing articles for blog for the blog and and uh, interviewing people and just trying to find out what's working for folks. Um, okay. So that's who uh, are you helping lead that charge? Do you have somebody there, a staffer, that that's their job is to maintain the blog and build that content up? Yeah, I, um, we work with this guy named Jimmy Guterman, who's okay. a former Harvard Business Review and MIT Press editor. Okay. Awesome business to business, and he's now built up a crew of freelancers and, and writers who you know contribute to the blog. Right. We try to post two or three times a week, and then sometimes you know folks that work here get inspired. Like there was one on uh, that Ted Bronstein wrote about the loneliness of sales, which is a great article. Okay. Um, there's a lot of good, uh, a lot of good stuff there. 
Oh yeah, I'm seeing the remote sales. Uh, yeah. You may not work loneliness and sales. And clearly, and clearly, being on this show will hopefully uh, get you a little bit more exposure, and you know, telling people about the tool and how they can use it. Right. Uh, you know, I just feel you know one of my questions earlier about like Outlook and other email clients. I think Outlook might have a, a checkbox for like read receipt or something like that. But you yeah. know, I feel like some of these tools are still so uh, advanced that people probably don't. You know, I was talking to Amul about the pixel tracking and some of this stuff technologically, and he's like, "Wow, that's how it works." And uh, I think you know, definitely content marketing and. Uh, getting the word out is a great way to let people know that this sort of tool is even possible and it can help them a lot in their day-to-day -day lives. I, I really do think so. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm looking at your blog here, and yeah, it's you've got a, a, quite a bit of uh, a, a lengthy articles here. These aren't just like little tiny blurbs. Uh, really good content, I, I can see. I, I really believe that um, if people are going to take the time to go to the blog and read stuff, they should, you know, they should feel like their intelligence was respected and that they get some value out of it. Right. Um, I mean, I really, I've just, I don't know, I've seen so many like slapdash blogs and my my sort of threshold is like, hey, if the, you know, if the, head, if the VP of sales of American Express came to our blog to check us out, right. mm -hmm. what would they think? Right. And if, you know, if it, if it, if it would, you know, make our product look bad. Like I, will, I want nothing to do with right, it. Right. Like, yeah. I don't even bother putting it up like, yet. Hey, yeah. Who are these guys? I, I don't. You know, I, I don't want to install something, or I don't right. use Gmail, or whatever. But right. they're, you know, thoughtful, intelligent people that are working hard to try to help salespeople. So. Right. Right. Yeah, you know, um, I, I really love the fact that you guys aren't spending a ton of money on marketing. You're doing a lot of this inbound stuff and referral, all, very similar to the small sort of viral startups. I dig that a lot. Uh, are you doing any sort of social, you know, like Facebook, uh, Twitter stuff uh, for the marketing part? We, we have a Facebook page. We have a LinkedIn group. We tweet seven or ten times a day, okay. mostly with content that we find, you know, useful. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. That's, That's about cool. it. Yeah, it's yeah. not a huge portion of our marketing activity, but gotcha, gotcha. I, I, I look at Twitter like a thousand times a day. I do. Okay. I mean, I just I'm so paranoid. Like, I just want to make sure that we answer people's questions as quickly as we can about stuff. Wow, okay. that's that's really great. And, and do you that, find that a lot of people are using that channel to reach out to you guys? Yeah. Yeah. You, you know, yeah, and I would yeah. I would think these are pretty savvy folks if they're on Twitter and and they're doing sales. These aren't just the computer phobic salespeople, you know. No, I mean that 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 stereotype I think is um, is not fully deserved. Um, there certainly are technophobic salespeople out there, but for the most part, salespeople are always interested in finding an edge, okay. and so they will learn new technologies that help them get an edge, like. You know, salespeople are the reason why BlackBerry got off the ground. Right. Salespeople figured out how to plug in a weird little BlackBerry dongle into their machine because they realized they wanted to get email on the go, and the right. IT manager wouldn't install it in the Exchange server. Right. right. And salespeople like spawned the whole, uh, you know, um, electronic contact book, right. and Goldmine and Act, because they wanted a way to make their job easier. Right. So. Right. They're not. They're technophobic only from the point of view of like if you're trying to shove technology down their throat. They're like, why? Right. Right. They're not afraid yeah. of it. They think yeah. it's stupid. Right. Right. Or, or <laughs> possibly a waste of time. Or how does it add to my bottom line? No, you're right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And and frankly, they're right to do so yeah, because yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. um they're 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 you know fifty percent or more variable compensation. So yeah. they need to close the business. And if right. they're not. Then why are you talking to me? I got to go close business. <laughs> you yeah, I mean? no, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. So uh, here's a, here's a random question: Could you see yourself integrating into something like Google Voice for SMS? Sure. Yeah. Oh, that's a that's huge. That's wow. very cool. Um, I mean, because we, we were talking about like SMS open rates are like a hundred percent, and I wonder that salespeople probably also use that channel as well. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. We'll keep pricing. Yeah. I mean, that. fundamentally, like the product vision is. Uh, wherever a salesperson is, yes, we should be there to help you close the deal. Well, let's talk sure. a, really briefly about that. We're, now, you've obviously got some great features in there, uh, the reminder. Uh, what's next on the on the roadmap for Yesware? Um, we, we, we now have enough you know, customers that, uh, and enough enterprises that are using Yesware, you know, folks from you know, Groupon and AdRoll and 
HubSpot and um, many others that are, you know, really actively rolling this out to their sales team and sort of, in a sense, changing the way that they manage their sales team okay. uh, with Yesware. And so they have a lot of great ideas about how to develop the platform for their sort of, you know, we're a uh, hundred to five thousand people. Uh, kind of use cases. Very so, cool. All right. Yeah, I definitely want to talk about. We're going to have actually uh, Adam Burke from Adroll come on. Uh, how would a company like Adroll? Uh, what what are what are some unique things about a startup of that size or growing to that size? Uh, what what are some of the things that they're needing out of Yesware that they don't really have right now? Well, we've got a great. I mean, they did a great uh, promotional video or yep. sort of testimonial video for I us. Saw on that. The web. Yep. You can see mm -hmm. the screenshot actually in your thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you know you can watch that for detail. But fundamentally, any um, any sales team that's scaling as fast as they are, yeah. um, you know, has a key metric, which is the time that it takes a new hire to come up to full productivity. Oh. And if they can minim if they can shorten that by a month or two, yeah. it makes mm -hmm. an enormous difference into how quickly they can ramp the business. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I so see. guess where it helps in a bunch of different ways for them to make new salespeople more productive. And that's mm -hmm. been a for AdRoll specifically and for a lot of other startups, it's been a okay. compelling reason to roll this and out. And I'm 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 on, I'm guessing it's mostly to do with these awesome template library that you can quickly grab all these templates and slight modifications and you're ready to rock. Yeah, it's it's template libraries, it's it's the integration of the CRM system, um, it's the reminder feature, but primarily those first two are sort of ways to help sales people get up to speed faster. Right. Like you think of it, you're you're a new salesperson. You just Got out of two weeks or three weeks of training. Right. You got your first lead sheet. You're raring to go, right. and you get there. And like in your email are the ten top performing templates for you to do your prospecting on. Right. You know, and you click on the one that's 100, and you you know you start working on it. You try different ones, and you see the results. Right. Up, you get a sense of like, oh, this is working for me or not. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a big productivity booster for for new salespeople. Oh, this is very great. Uh, mm -hmm. Share us uh, if you got any. Great tips for um, for biz dev for startups. Uh, do you have any good ideas? Uh, share uh, tips that you want to yeah. share. I mean, the first one that pops to mind actually is my uh, is my favorite. You've been blowing me off a long. Yeah, actually, you might use this for the guy. <laughs> you know what? I should use it because I am getting a little blowed off. Yes. The, the the like I've been in touch with you. I've been sending you stuff. You haven't written back, <laughs> and it's sort of like. It's the last email I send before ignoring the person or you know taking them off my list. I okay. say the subject line is um, too busy or not interested. Ah. And then the the, the body of the email is basically like, hey Ted, I just want to know. Like I've sent you some things. Hey. If if you're not interested, I'll, I won't bug you again. If you've been too busy, I totally understand. Yeah, yeah. Um, tell me when I should follow up. I love this. Is a great. That's a really good one. <laughs> yeah, because nice. because you know, I, I, let's be honest here. There's a, there's so many non-repliers out there. I'll just ignore mm -hmm. this guy. Uh, it and, happens and, all the time with the email. And the, yeah. and and there are so many people that you want to be in touch with right. that you're wasting your time waiting for this guy to get back to you when in fact you should be out talking to other people that are more likely yeah. to answer. So yeah, sure. you know, like I'm really really into qualifying aggressively and and mm -hmm. very quickly. Like second best answer is a quick no. Right. Yeah, I'd rather get a yes, but right. if I don't, I'd rather get a quick yeah, no. Yeah, let, yeah. Let me know I'm barking up the wrong tree here. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just tell me. That's fine. I need yeah. nothing personal. Right, right. Yeah. Wow. It goes for investors. It goes for you know partners. It goes for customers. It goes yeah. for you know potential employees or potential employers. Right. Right, you're exactly. absolutely right. So, all right, great. So, are, are you guys? I, I don't know if I if you said you guys weren't profitable yet. Are, are how close are you to profitability? Well, you know, 75% of the companies that go public on NASDAQ aren't profitable. Hmm. So um, it's that. not a big concern right now. Okay. Uh, the luxury of venture capital. Yeah, it's true. It's very true. And it's, it's um, you know, there, it comes with costs for sure. Are you trying to keep the team small? Are you, are you trying to scale rapidly? Where are you at right now? Are you just going to keep focusing on the product? Uh, Obviously, we're that's your big. We have a very. Um, we've been very cautious with our spend, so we are not profitable, but we are. Uh, you know, we try to keep our burn around 200k a month. Okay. Um, so we, you know, 
until like the last three months, we basically were very, very diligently not spending money except on the most important things. Now we're increasing our burn a little bit is because we're hitting a ramp and okay. things are starting to scale more organically. That's great. Um, but... Wow, um, hold on a second. Tell, tell us about this organic growth. Are you finding like a little tipping point after a couple hundred thousand people are using it now? We're getting enough referrals. Is that what... Well, more from a revenue standpoint, what we, what we offered up until uh, the end of last year was just a free and a $5 a month plan. Okay. And then in January, we started offering a $20 a month plan and a $50 a month plan. Okay. And each of those tiers has different features associated with them. Okay. Um, and those features and the price points associated with them have given us uh, quite a significant uh, boost in terms Heck of revenue. Yes, twenty dollars per user, fifty dollars. Hell, hell yes, that is a huge boost. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it was quite gratifying to go out to you know our customers and say, hey, we'd like you, you know, do you want to roll this out to everyone on your team, and it's going to cost you, you know, three x or five x or 8x what you were paying, right? Mm -hmm. Because the features were compelling, and because we had earned their trust, they were right. almost all like, "Yeah, we're into it." Yeah, we're into it. Cool. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. That's that yeah. is so great, man. Uh, so you you got? I think you got a hit on your hands, man. I think you got a hit. <laughs> I think you got a hit on your hands. Yeah. Wow! Well, I, well, don't blow yeah. all that cash. Just keep it low. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Are you gonna Are you gonna hire maybe a couple of guys at some later date to go after the ad rolls? You know, the the new big uh, startups are killing it. Yeah, we we actually have been doing that over the last uh, four months. We've been building an inside sales team here. Okay. Yeah. It was ironic because you know we we had this company fully dedicated to you know yeah. uh, salespeople and making right. them more productive, but we didn't have a sales you didn't team have ourselves. Your own sales people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, now we have uh, seven folks okay. who are you know oh. starting to reach out to all the good leads that come in and, and just train them on the product as much as anything and also offer them the chance to, you know, upsell or share within their team, etc. Right, mm -hmm. right. Nice. Awesome. Well, I have to tell you, uh, Matthew, it's been a pleasure, pleasure having you on. Uh, you. If, if there are uh, some guys out there struggling, looking to raise money, what, what last piece of advice would you give to anybody that's out there uh, with a great idea but nobody's really believing in them? Um... You know, it. Uh, Can we struggle? Well, we've all stop. heard the "don't give up," so don't so don't say that. No, no. I was just going to say, like, the struggling doesn't particularly stop. Um, mm -hmm. There and there. So, so if it's too much to struggle, then like maybe startups aren't a good use of your time. Oh. Um, but, but you know, if you're into the struggle because you have a vision or you have a belief or you want to try it. You know, set a date for yourself. After which point, like you really gotta reassess, right? Mm -hmm. And then do everything in your power to get past that date, and and to set a benchmark for yourself to say, I need revenue by Y. You know, I need I need one concrete customer paying me money by this date or something like that. Right. And it's like three or six months out in the future. Right. Um, and I would not wait for investors in any case. Like the last mm -hmm. thing you want to do is be strung along waiting for someone to sign a term sheet. What you really mm -hmm. want to do is be cranking through your core business metrics, um, such that investors, such that when you go into investors, they're just like, "Oh, like how? Like you've done a lot in the last six months." You're like, right, "Uh huh." Right, right. And now I've got ten paying customers. I'm going to have twenty in a quarter. So right. if you want to jump in, then we're ready to go. But if not, that's cool. I'll be back or whatever. Right. We'll in six months. Because the amount of time that people spend, you know, throwing themselves against the walls of the venture capital community yeah. is, is disproportionately uh, ineffective compared to getting more signed customers. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting uh, point of view there. Uh, if, speaking of which, well, what's your thoughts of AngelList? Have you explored that platform at all? Or? Yeah, it's amazing. It's totally amazing. I love it. We were, we were <laughs> it's funny, I, I was on AngelList, you know, they were one of the 45. Okay. Uh, oh, really? And, and we were on, and, and basically, you know, those guys got back to me really quickly. I posted them on, and they were like, yeah, you know, I don't, it's cool and all, but like Enterprise B2B Boston, not really our thing. Right. I don't, I think you need more social proof, and then we'll list you. Okay. And I was like, okay, well, <laughs> I don't have social proof, and whatever. Right. And so mm -hmm. then 
after I closed the round, right. three months later, they came back and they were like, okay, I think we're ready now. And I'm like, dude, it's too late. <laughs> that is nice. so great. Yeah. So I you love what they're doing. You know, I think it's awesome. I think the community is incredible. The hiring tools they built are amazing. Best, mm-hmm. best in the industry. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm a huge fan. Yeah, no, it's it really is. They they truly are disrupting. I think this whole angel investing and and in many ways, it's definitely. And speaking the of which, did you want to plug any uh, you hiring over at uh, Yesware? Um, yeah, we're we're we use Ruby on Rails as our you know back end development environment. So okay. if people are interested in doing really interesting and, and uh, challenging Ruby on Rails or big data problems, um, we'd love to talk to you. We're based in Boston. We don't do remote work. So the whole team is here, um, and uh, there's a really good group of people to work with. If you want to, here's my thing on hiring. Right, oh, yeah, I want nice. Yesware to be the place that we all look back on when we're retired as the best job of our career. Okay. I want I want it to be the place where we think back and we're like, you know, that's the place I was pushed the most, I was challenged the most, I learned the most, I was valued the most, and I was and I was and I contributed the most. So it sounds to me like you want to build this out for a while. I thought maybe you're looking for an exit here in a couple of years or so. No, I mean, I, I don't see why. I, I, I mean, I love what we do. I love the team. It's a huge opportunity. Um, I've sold the company before, and I sold it in a great circumstance to a fantastic company. Um, you know, it's very difficult to make that transition and still maintain the momentum and the passion. So right, I right. just assume build this into a very big company in Boston. Okay, wow. love to hear that. Yeah, that's very cool. Yeah, yeah. I love it. All right, if if somebody wants to get a hold of you, what's a what's a good general email? Matthew at yesware dot com. M a t t a t w. Awesome. At that's really I great. Uh, the questions or whatever. Okay, awesome. Uh, Jeff, unless you have anything to add. No, it was a pleasure speaking to you. I think uh, hopefully our audience will go try out Yesware. You know, check out that freemium version and see what, uh, you know, when people open your emails. It's great. If, yeah. if people have, you know, suggestions for the product, I'd love to hear them. Please send me a note. Okay. Excellent. Awesome. Yeah, I'm a big product guy too. So, I, you know, it just product, product, product all day long for me. And I think what great. you guys do is really functional. Yeah. Thank you. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, just be. Uh, it's so so far. It's a pretty minimal product, and I totally get. I love that. So uh, you know, whatever features you guys add, don't add too many. Make sure That's they're so awesome. Funny. That's so funny. People say that when we survey them about what features do you want. Okay. Really? Like a good twenty percent of people say keep it simple. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Keep it simple. Yeah. Cool. Absolutely. Yeah. All, All right. right. Well. Thanks, guys. Thanks for thanks for coming on. Thanks Great talking to you.